In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer questions asked by, by listeners like you. What they do is they go to our Instagram page, they post the question underneath our qua meme. We pick the best ones and we answer them in episodes like this. But the way we open the episode is with our introduction. This is where we talk about current events. We talk about our lives and uh, random topics. Super random. So here's what we did in this episode. We start out by talking about psilocybin and depression. More and more studies are coming out showing it to be a breakthrough treatment. So it's kind of interesting. Then I talked about how fish consumption is connected to higher IQ babies. This is a pregnant women who eat fish. Uh, tend to have babies that are smarter, so that's kind of interesting. Boom. Then we talked about SAD. That's the acronym, uh, Seasonal Affective Disorder. Some of you may be feeling this right now. This is where it gets colder and darker outside, and you're feeling kind of down and low. This happens to me. Now, mm. one thing you can use to help combat this is light therapy. We work with a company called Juve. They make uh, red light therapy. These are uh, panels that will do. Uh, they rejuvenate your skin. They can actually help hair regrowth. Uh, they can reduce inflammation. By the way, this is all clinically proven. This isn't just baloney. Um, but it also can help if you have seasonal affective disorder. Um, and we have a hookup for you. If you go to juve.com, that's J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get a free MAPS Prime program with the purchase of $500 or more and free shipping. By the way, they also have financing for many of their products. Make sure you go check it out. Then I talked about the HIV sperm bank. This is a the very first HIV positive sperm bank yeah. that opened up in New Zealand. Uh, we'll see how well Did they do. Did not know that was a market sell. Then we talked about Christmas shopping and how much I don't hate it anymore. It's kind of weird. Mm. We talked about uh, Viori. This is a company we work with and how they planted a tree for every purchase the other day. And they also have a gift guide on their website. Now, Viori are the makers of some of the best athleisure wear you'll find anywhere. The so it's best. Just comfortable clothing that looks good enough to wear anywhere, but you can also work out in. Um, and it's super, super high quality. We have a discount for you. If you go to Viori Clothing, that's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code listed on that page. You'll get a full 25% off. Then I talked about the mileage that Tesla cars get. Um, and how much it costs to charge them versus uh, your mm. gas cars. I'm trying to make the case for the Tesla truck. Elon, send him a truck, Brady. <laughs> and then we talked about wasteful purchases that we've made in the past. Then we got into the fitness portion of the episode. Here's the questions that we answered. The first question, does it take longer to build muscle or burn body fat? We had a nice debate in that part of the episode. The next question was, uh, what's the deal with milks? Yeah, that's right. You heard that. <laughs> Plural. Yeah. Are almond and soy milk more or less processed than regular dairy? The third question was, what tips or advice would we give to someone who suffers from body dysmorphia and gets triggered by going to a gym? So we give some tips there. And the final question, if any of us were single again today, would we use dating apps? Uh, so we make that, uh, that, that discussion there. And also this Grindr. month, our most, one of our most popular programs, it's a great muscle building program that helps you sculpt your body the way you see fit, MAPS Aesthetic, this is a bodybuilder, body sculpting based workout program, is 50% off. I know a lot of you have been messaging us about MAPS Aesthetic. When is it going to go on sale? When is it going to go on sale? This is the month it's on sale for the entire year. Okay, so here's what you do for the discount. Go to mapsblack.com and use the code BLACK50, B-L-A-C-K-5-0, no space, for the discount. I was not listening when Sal was over here trying to sell you guys on wh where to invest our money over here. I'm always skeptical of him trying to take our money. Silly, silly mm. Sybin. Okay, you, ready? You, hear, yeah, me yeah, hear me yeah, out. Hear me out. Silly Sybin. In. Edible shoes. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Edible shoes. No, now not you're what, fucking right. That's, that's not what it was. <laughs> No, no, no. I was reading it. Really? I got to find the article That's a now. horrible idea. You caught me off guard. Let me find this article. So There's it, an article around what you want to invest in? Oh, well, there has been. I've been following along the progression of the studies on psilocybin. So, ah. Yeah, psilocybin is the the active ingredient, the, the psychedelic ingredient that's found in, in magic mushrooms. And I've talked about this in the past on the show, but... Right, the benefits with therapy that they've been showing. Well, they're finding incredible potential benefits of using psilocybin in conjunction with 
uh, cognitive behavioral therapy with therapists mm. for things like PTSD and, and, and depression. Well, the FDA, uh, second year in a row now, I'm going to, I got to look this up because I want to make sure I, I, I get this right. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. This is the second year in the row that they uh, have designated psilocybin therapy as breakthrough therapy. Mm. So now why is this important? This is an action that's meant to accelerate the, the normally sluggish process of drug development and review. So normally when you put out a potential new drug or whatever. The it takes pro- forever, right? Forever. Don't, don't they say it's like on average like a decade? Ten years. I thought I saw a documentary one time that talked about There was a good documentary yeah. on this. Well, that's and purposeful too. Ten right? years and right. sometimes it's up to a billion dollars. Uh, oftentimes hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, and this is just a side note. Um, we have even even uh, we have this FDA that does this. It actually prevents a lot of drugs from getting yeah. developed and put forward because the cost is too expensive. So oftentimes, what, size, what, what companies will do is they'll only invest on things that they kind of know are maybe a sure thing. Mm-hmm. So like uh, uh, opioid type drugs, they'll modify them a little bit, knowing that opioids generally you know cause pain relief. But very few companies will go and invest in Something breakthrough. Completely, yeah, completely different. Yeah, because it's we're going to spend hundreds of millions or a billion dollars in ten years of research, and yeah, all the R and D is like pff, hundreds of millions of dollars. Very, very few of them actually make it through that entire process. Well, anyway, psilocybin, second year in a row now, has been designated breakthrough therapy. Now, one out of every three uh, drugs that have been designated as breakthrough therapies have passed FDA. So the odds are compared to other drugs extremely high. Now, why does it have this breakthrough therapy designation? Because they're finding it to be a groundbreaking potential treatment for depression, mm. which is a massive, Rampant. Yeah. massive market. It's one of the biggest uh, drug markets out there. It's like billions of dollars. Uh, uh, you know how many people are on uh, SSRIs or antidepressant type yeah. medications? Yeah. What are the common names for those? Uh, for what antidepressants? Yeah. SSRIs. So, no, I mean like the, the brands, na- brand names. Yeah. Oh, like Prozac, like Prozac Zoloft, so. um, uh, Wellbutrin. You know, uh, it's it's considered antidepressant. There's there's a whole host of them, right? Prozac yeah. being one of the first ones, right? And they're widely widely prescribed, and they have some efficacy. But psilocybin in these studies has, was shown to, like in one or two treatments with talk therapy, to have profound, loss, long-lasting effects. So it's not something you would take every single day. You In these tr- trials, they're giving it to people. They're doing this therapy, and then the depression's gone. Or, That's crazy. It, it, yes, and what yeah. they're finding in some of these studies is that the psilocybin is... What do you think? You think it's so, like it, it opens up a pathway somewhere in the brain that you've either won buried or blocked or like like you i mean we've all experienced it before i can I, i've only used psilocybin maybe five times total in my life and allegedly yeah, yeah allegedly yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I got you. the experience uh you know it's 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 interesting i, I and, and there was i had one of the times i was with katrina and it was the most uh, profound experience I've ever had within 10 years we've been together, nine and a half years we've been together. Mm-hmm. Um, we had one of the uh, deepest conversations ever. And I was, we weren't, uh, I took a very moderate dose. Like I, I still have never taken like a full like dose to where I get psychedelic, like crazy psychedelic mm-hmm. where you're seeing all kinds of crazy stuff. I did notice stuff like uh, images in the clouds and and the waves and, and staring mm-hmm. off into the sand and Things like that, but it wasn't. I was very cognizant of what was going on. I had a convers a deep conversation with her. But what I what I noticed personally was uh, this openness that I had with her, this vulnerability. And I already think I'm a pretty vulnerable person with her. We're very honest. We share a, a lot about ourselves, but the, the, this this time uh, was different than any other time that I'd ever experienced. And you know, we had a little bit of a breakthrough in our relationship um, in an area that uh, I wouldn't say we have we'd, we'd struggled with, but an area that I think that we just kind of were different the way we viewed things. And for me, um, you know, I, those that know, I, I'm you know nine years with this woman that I know I'll spend the rest of my life with. Yet I'm not married yet and uh, settled down. A lot of people didn't understand that or, or think that I have like commitment issues. And even her, I think, probably struggled with that for a long time. And from very early on, when we first started dating, I, I kind of told her what my my vision was 
uh, and what I what I wanted for myself well before I even met her and, and the life that I wanted to provide my wife and child. And that was very, very important to me that uh, that I did that. And I think that day, that time that we had when we had this conversation, um, she looked at me at one point and she just like, she started crying and she's like, I get it. I understand now and I understand wh why you're doing everything that you're doing. It, it really is for us. And I think earlier on in our relationship, she viewed it a little more selfishly, like it was me. I, I wanted all this for myself when it was very unselfish. And so there was always this disconnect there. Mm -hmm. And in that time we did that, it was uh, like nothing, no other conversation we've well, ever had. Well, we have to be careful when we talk about um, substances like this because what the what the studies are showing is it's that- it's illegal still? Well, no, besides that, I don't give a shit, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Do what you want, you know, obviously at your own uh, peril and discretion, but- the, what we ha what we what the studies are showing is that the efficacy is in combination with guided therapy. A, yes, a guided guided therapy because these substances are powerful uh, consciousness altering drugs, which means you could go in either direction. There are there are you know records of people who've gone into who've had serious paranoia or trauma from. The mm. psilocybin. Yeah, but isn't that isn't that anything? Yes, especially anything. if you have you potential over, for schizophrenia. You can do. You can overdo anything. It's not. Yeah. Yes, you're it's right. A, it's a drug. You're it's right. A drug it's, like anything else. And it's and not it just overdoing it. It's that you're you're working with a very uh, with a substance that makes you very uh, things are very suggestible to you. Well, and so, intent matters like like crazy with this. That's what they say, and that's what the yeah, that's what the studies show. I mean, look, the CIA spent lots of money. Seeing if they could brainwash people with uh, with psychedelic drugs because they obviously saw the potential there for the suggestibility. Um, but so when with in these studies, the, they're giving people not these massive psychedelic doses. I think they're giving them lower doses. It's it's and they're having a therapist. Hmm. And what they're finding in in some of these some of these other studies where they're looking at the brain and what's happening is that, and and this is just a theory. That oftentimes with depressive episodes, the brain gets stuck in this depressive loop where it thinks a particular way and breaking that loop mm. literally requires the brain to shift a little bit or, or how you think has to shift. And that's hard to do. And what these drugs may do is allow you to create new pathways, like you said, open up mm -hmm. new, mm -hmm. new things. And then now you have a different loop. Now you th view things a little bit differently. Like there were some early studies on uh, people end of life, people with terminal diseases. And their anxiety and fear. I mean, it was. And, and when they say breakthrough, I mean, when you read these studies, because depression is so hard to treat, mm -hmm. is it's it, remarkable. Have they found like so the prefrontal cortex is like that's the main center for like how you view yourself and your ego and uh, like that's that's the one that you're interpreting constantly through. Is this like you know helping you to kind of get out of uh, this always it. yeah just like I think processing it through there I think it's more about um, I, I don't think it's that so as much as it's getting rid of the uh, it, the the loops that we create they become instinctual so mm. like if you think of like a um, irrational fear mm -hmm. like oh I'm really scared of uh, I have family members that are scared of driving on the freeway they're scared of the freeway I can't get on the freeway I can't get on the freeway so it's kind of this irrational but they'll do all kinds of other stuff with their car which is equally as dangerous. And so it's kind of this irrational fear. You they can't get out of it logically because it's a reaction. It happens in the part of the brain that that probably processes it instinctually. Then you're trying to out logic your way out of it. You ever try to out logic your way out of like extreme emotions? It's very difficult to do. Oh, yeah. So it, it, it may be something along those lines. But what I was talking about is the investment opportunity on this is massive. Whatever company or companies that develop drugs. Based off of psilocybin, and if it does do what some what well, they're saying, so it they've do? actually developed like serious protocols for the treatment, or is this still in development? Isn't it? In, isn't it already happening in Colorado? Um, these are these are certain. So far, these are preliminary studies. Okay, um, and they are making it into like a you know like a like a pill or whatever. Right. Um, but let's say that it passes, and let's say it is a breakthrough treatment. Let's say you know it's more effective than traditional antidepressants. It, which all also have their own side effects, right? You in, in according to the studies, you go, you meet with a therapist, you take this thing, you meet with them one or two times, and depression's gone for six months or a year. That's what they're finding. Wow. They're like re, they're coming back and talking to these people like six months and it's later. It's not like a massive dose. They're like kind of like scaling that up. 
from what I've read, it's not the doses that, you know, the heroic doses or right, whatever. Like, like you're going full psychedelic. Yeah, my experience yeah. with it was very minimal amount of what we were using. We weren't using very much at all. I don't even remember. I don't think we were even taking a, a half or a quarter of a dose. It was a micro dose. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take much to kind of get out of your own. I, and that to me, that's what what I was trying to explain that the what I think Katrina had. I think that she had told herself something, uh, you know, her own story of why I do what I do mm. for so long and probably influenced by family and friends and other people that no matter how many times I tried to explain it, it was like, you know, and it sure. wasn't like a heart, like it was a major problem. It was just like, you know, she's going to believe what she believes about it. I'm going to believe what I'm going to believe about it. That f- it felt like that all dissolved and we were able to get as one in sure. that conversation. Get like a that new perspective completely. Together, or, right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, it, was a, it was a very unique experience for me. Nothing now, like I had ever experienced but, before. But now imagine you do something like that, right? You do a big dose and you're in the wrong environment and you think negative thoughts. Right. And normally you kind of keep them at bay, but now they become a part of who you are. Like I know somebody who she thought she would uh, benefit from doing high doses of psychedelics because she had some anxiety issues or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it gave her PTSD. She had, took a bunch and had such a terrible experience that she's had to go to therapy yeah. to fix what that one experience did to her. Well, so the, and, ba- and, the bad experience that I heard are, are, are normally people that are you know seeking it to get really fucking high from it, right? Like they want the psychedelic crazy experience, or just not ready. Yeah, or, you and, know, because they have great, there's great books around. I have a client right now that's you know in her over fifty something years old, never experienced anything. Is super fascinated by it. Uh, did all of her research. She bought a couple of books on it, read it, and she actually just did it last week. I haven't seen her since then. Mm. I've only texted her, and she's been kind of talking to me about her experience. Uh, and she said it was it was groundbreaking for yeah. her. I just it's one of those things. It's like because um, there's a lot of people in our space, right, in the health space, that are like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever, oh, and it God. solves all these problems. And oh yeah, uh, and no, re- there's serious caution there. Yeah, it's like you're. It's like okay, you're just using it to escape. Obviously, mm-hmm. you haven't solved any problems. You're just making yourself feel better. Um, I don't think there's any secret shortcut to, you know, solving uh, your issues. I think um, that it's just it could be a tool. Um, and again, they're using this with therapists. I think that's a big difference. Yeah. Imagine being in a a setting where you're safe. You're in a in an office. You know that they've given you pharmaceutical grade, so you know what's in there. Because I think part of the fear is what's in this. What is this mushroom I'm eating, or what's in this pill I'm taking? Here you're with the doctor or whatever. They give you the, the you know what's in there. Then they're talking you through, you start to get afraid, but you're talking to a professional like, listen, this is totally normal. Mm-hmm. Normally the heart rate speeds up a little bit. So you're like, okay, this is fine. I'm with a doctor. And I mean, what a, what a, what a totally different experience you could have oh, yeah. with a therapist. And so that's what I'm imagining, you know, the difference is. But anyway. you, you, isn't, isn't Colorado already legal? I thought it was legal in Colorado. It's decrum, de- decriminalized. decriminalized. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's not legal. It's just decriminalized. Yeah. So like uh, personal use. Oakland too. I think. Yeah. City of Oakland. Yeah. yeah. So. so now when you see it like that, they, they you'll start seeing it pop up like in smoke shops and they'll be selling it then. No, that that's that's still illegal. So you can't sell it. Really? Yeah. Decriminalized means that if you have it on you, small dose, uh, you know, personal use, and a cop finds you that they won't do anything. But they can't sell it. No, selling it yet. no. Legalizing means it's now. So legal how did the smoke buy. shops get away with doing the the gray market stuff? Like they were doing kratom before everybody else was Still doing. Still not considered illegal. It's really no. Like they and, and sometimes it's a gray market. Well, they'll say illegal for you can't sell this for human consumption. So then what they'll do is they'll right. Say, so yeah, that's it's uh, bath salts. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> or right. plant food or something. Right, shit. right. Yeah. Isn't that what they'll do? Like I think it's it's so, my garden. so I wouldn't be surprised if you do see it pop up in smoke shops but they'll say not for human consumption, for your garden. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> for fucking some yeah. shit it's like that. Supposedly mushrooms are easy to grow too. So I wouldn't be surprised if they found a loophole for you to like buy a spore and then grow it yourself. Yeah, or a kit, uh, yeah. right. Something like, or a kit, and then yeah. they tell you where to find the spore, and then you just grow it. Who knows? Well, you know? some cow shit yeah, for yeah. the most part, right? That's it. That's yeah. it. Anyway, more cool um, science. Um, I was uh, on Twitter um, reading- uh, you know, So glad to see you there now. Yeah. Uh, people, You haven't announced that on the show, that we, no, fin- we no, finally no, got yeah. you- uh, Tweeting over I'm there. I'm just not a. You know, it's funny, dude. I'm Dropping so. Some nuts you're a big on twat. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, <laughs> know. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Twit, twit, twatter. Twitter. He's a twatter. Not twatter. Yeah. Um. You know what, dude? It's just more social media. You know what I mean? It's like I don't want more. I yeah, know. but this is so much more up your alley, in my opinion. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. You. You are. I like, like to write shit. Yeah, you do, and it's they're short, challenging to the things. point. Yeah. You know. Yeah, challenging people. I mean, it's it's. I think it's been your should have been. It's where much you needed most, in most that, especially that environment. Yeah, yeah there, people need to be checked out there like crazy. Well, I was reading. Um, I think it was was it, what's her name, Dr. Rondra Patrick. Love her. 
Um, and she posted a study that showed that uh, mothers who consumed fish during pregnancy had IQs that were between 4.8 to 9.5 points higher than children whose mothers did not eat fish. So they're saying that higher fish consumption is linked to a stronger effect on IQ. Um, and this is based off of that's, reviews of 44. That's such, those studies are weird to me. Yeah. I feel yeah. like it's self selection bias. Yeah, no. there. Oh, no. Right? Like, how do you, okay, so how do you know that the people that. Uh, those so getting the right nutrients, the right timing of development process. Well, so this well, yeah, was, and w- the people that make those those healthy choices while their babies in there, are they more likely to be smarter people in the first place? So, there so was, this was based off of 44, um, review, 44 reviews. So they actually went and looked at lots of different types of studies. You're right, just one may show that, but uh, they're showing that the what is it, DHA, mm-hmm. uh, one of the the fatty acid uh, components in in fish oil or fish fat, is very important for brain health and brain development. Mm. Very very important. This effect, by the way, is higher uh, when uh, a vegan supplements with, uh, and you can get, I believe, DHA from uh, certain types of algae. I believe there are vegan. Forms. They're just not as effective as the animal forms. Um, so it's it's uh, it definitely has an effect on the brain in terms of you know Im- improving. Speaking of DHEA, didn't you say that? Didn't I hear you say yesterday talking about supplements that are going to get banned? Was that a true yeah, article? I don't know if I don't know. I got to find out find that out. Yeah, you read an article yesterday that we were like, what the hell? They're going to try and ban curcumin. A- they said they were going to ban. Yeah. Uh, there was a bunch of things that were supposed to, supposedly going to be banned. I got to look that up. Oh, okay. You didn't yeah. follow up on that? No, I didn't. Uh, I know, that's so interesting. Uh, sorry about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, does this yeah. does this dark weather affect you guys at all? Uh, I mean, yeah. Like you said, when I get home and it's dark, it kind of, I mean, it, it it limits the amount of like activity I'm doing. Like I'm just kind of like more prone to being like ready for bed already. Like, it, I'm just it, like, I'm done with the day. It used to for me, but I mean, ever since I, I got the juve, I've made that like something that when we have these like super cloudy days and it's dark and it's rainy, uh, I'll try and spend more time sitting in front of that thing. That's actually, that does help. That's yeah. actually a legit way of using it. Um, Cause what do they call it? Seasonal affective disorder. Sad. That's the acronym. How funny, huh? Good <laughs> yeah, marketing. Great there. how that worked out. Yeah, and that, yeah. um, it affects like 5% of, uh, of people. That's a pretty big, number. Yeah. Um, and it's literally, uh, like the acronym says, people get more depressed. They want to sleep more. Um, you know, their habits start to change because of the lack of light. And one of the treatments that's been shown to work is light therapy. So you could either use really, really bright, uh, lights or juve would be perfect. Just like you said. Well, I, you know, and I, anybody who has one, right. They can probably attest to this. It's, it sounds weird or hokey when I, when I tell people it, um, but man, I notice when I sit in front of it 10, 15 minutes afterwards, I feel energy increase. I, my skin feels like it's glowing. I just mm-hmm. am in a better mood altogether, which is the similar effects that I get when I go stand out in the sun. Mm-hmm. You know, I like we get, we talk about it all the time. We're locked in this little dungeon in the studio. And sometimes like after we've been in here for a few hours, I feel lethargic and tired and moody and then I'll go out. And if it's, especially when it's a sunny day, I go for a walk for like 10 minutes complete change of mood. I'm walking with better posture. I just feel way yeah. better. And so I've done, I've connected that with, you know, these cloudy, dark, rainy type days and shit. I'll just go in my room, my spare room, flip on the juice, sit in 10, 15 minutes, Max and I, and we'll hang out. Yeah, same here. I know I it's the same thing. Way better. Especially if I'm working on the computer and I'll turn it on, I'll get that same kind of, you know, energized benefit to it. An interesting thing too, because uh, our chickens like hadn't been producing ever since like the time change, like as, as frequently and as great uh, oh, as they were before. Red light for the chickens, bro? Not red light. <laughs> I, it would be cool to do that, but I have we, we do have like a, a light that will turn on uh, to kind of extend in the day for them and that's on a timer uh-huh. and is it and working totally yeah like they're all producing uh you know uh, like they were when when the sun was like oh interesting so do the, the production of the eggs go down in the winter time in comparison yes. to the summer absolutely yeah oh wow that's mm-hmm. interesting mm-hmm. yeah so manipula- obviously it affects them too so. and then you manipulate that with with artificial light mm-hmm. wow i didn't know that makes sense farm well, guy should know well that. think about it this way so you know when you're sick how you want to kind of be alone and you don't want to be around a lot of people and you want to kind of bundle up or whatever yeah that's an evolutionary uh response because it's it prevents you from spreading your disease you're not trying to go out and talk to lots of people hang out with lots Mm. of people it's how we prevent disease but there's those feedback loops work in the opposite way too so if you're not sick but you're inside a lot you're not doing much you're not getting much sunlight 
your brain, your body, your mind may get the signal mm. something's not right, and it'll start to make you feel sad and make you feel Speaking worse. Speaking of a spreading disease, what what was this like HIV and sperm bank thing oh, that we had to talk you, about? Did you guys hear about this? No, I didn't hear about. I this. gotta find. I gotta find the article. So the world's first uh, HIV sperm bank. I'm gonna look this up real quick. Um, and I believe it was in New in New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken. I read the article. Yeah, it is. Okay, it was in New Zealand. So they launched the world's first HIV positive sperm bank. Now the reason why they did this is they're yeah. trying to reduce the stigma of, uh, of of for people who are HIV positive. So what they did is with these people, they put them on antiviral drugs. They brought the HIV load so low that they can't transmit it. So the sperm itself isn't going to give you HIV, but it's still considered HIV positive. So I'm not quite sure why. So wait, 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 let me get, so let me get the point. So this, these are people that would already have H, they already have HIV. So then they would go to a sperm they bank. They donate here. to a sperm bank. So we have medicine now that is effective enough to bring your HIV viral load okay, but, but down what, so who, low that you can't transmit. Yeah, but what it. I don't Where's the market for that. Right. What I don't understand is like, say somebody, uh, you know, say your partner or somebody you know that wants to get pregnant, why would she go to that bank? Exactly. Yeah, yeah dude. Exactly. Like if you have an option for like, like, like a, so, no. So here's the deal. Unless she already has HIV. No, 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 no. Then, no. I, you're I you're not going to get HIV from the sperm. So, so I know, but then why? I don't, why? Because they're I think it's, inclusive. <laughs> they're I, exactly. They're trying to right? so, so soften every, the blow. You too can give your sperm. We're not going right. to exclude you. Yes. Uh, so here's what, here's a quote we'll from. see how that market here, goes. I know, exactly. Yeah. Here's a quote from the I want from a doctor sperm, please. related to this facility. It says, stigma can lead to inconsistent taking of medicines and result in much less effective treatment of HIV and risk of transmitting HIV. Fear of stigma and discrimination can stop people at risk from getting tested and those living with HIV from accessing treatment and support. So he thinks, they think having this sperm bank with HIV positive sperm that won't give you HIV will lower the fear and stigma around HIV. Here's the deal. What the it's a, fuck? I agree with you guys. It's a market. Yeah. I, I honestly Nobody's don't think- Nobody's demanding this. Yeah. There's plenty of HIV negative sperm that's right. out there that people will buy. I mean, and you're are, buying this to is produce there, a kid. Or are we, are, we, are we just not aware of an area that we're unfamiliar with because it's not our space? Is, is like sperm banks like uh, empty right now? No. I mean, are there, is there like yeah, a- they dry. Yeah. They, is, there a, is there a need for this? No. Some, some donations? If that, if that was the case, the cost of, of, of giving your sperm to a, uh, a bank would be enough for where well, you'd see men lining up. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking making money. Like yeah. yeah. Say, no, it's cheap. Hey, dude. How much money do you get for donating yeah, your what's sperm? What's the cost these days? How much, Doug? You do it on a Friday, every Friday, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 5,000 kids. Yeah, it keeps the lights on here. Yeah. You know? Every, every yeah. time I see a kid, it looks like Doug. Like, yeah. Yeah, Doug's always wearing new Gotta jewelry. Gotta pay the bill somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy balling over yeah. here. It's, a, <laughs> it's all, all these opportunity cost. You got how much money has Justin wasted by now? I know, <laughs> it could right? Be, it could it's be just, just like pointless. I think you I think you make like a hundred bucks or something like that. It's like yeah. worth nothing. You know how much money women get for their eggs? Mm, just wash right, right down the thousands, toilet. Thousands, right? Thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yeah, they get thousands of God, dollars. we're so expendable. What does it say? Get Up paid to, $1,500. No, no, no. Up to $500 for a one-hour donate. First of all, what's in an one hour? hour? Yeah, of yeah, are they expecting more than uh, a few deposits? Oh, okay. Donors earn $70 for each donation. Uh, and healthy men are able to earn up to $1,000 per month. Wow. Holy cow. Seventy dollars. Hold on, that's not that's not bad. Think about this. That's not bad. Think about this. If you're a dude and Dude, you, we do have value. This is great. Yeah, I mean, up to a thousand dollars a month just by, you know. Yeah. Doing yeah, what you're probably to, though, anyway. You're probably right, though. You, well, I'm, I'd be interested to see what the qualifications for that it's are. It's got to be a hella good yeah. sperm. Yeah, you got to be, be like a yeah. perfect pro athlete, oh, yeah. 4.0 GPA. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you got to yeah, in, right. in which case, you don't give a fuck about earning $1,000 a month <laughs> yeah. by like jerking off. <laughs> and Meanwhile, they're trying to sell tainted sperm. Yeah. Yeah. Look, if you want to make money jerking off, you could do way better online. Yeah. I don't think you can. <laughs> <laughs> you, know you can sell your videos. Oh, oh, that is a mystery, man. Hey, did you guys start your uh, Christmas shopping yet or what? Did you get some stuff done? Yeah. Dude, everything online. I totally took it. Are you done? This. Yeah, except for maybe one person, but that's it. Yeah. One of our nieces we forgot wow. about. Now, do you do it with Courtney or does she yeah, do it? And then she you... does it the majority. I'll give her credit for that. Like she she gets it done and then I kind of like oversee like, yes, no, yes, no. And then I'm like, I'll find a few of them that like for my, my brother and his kids and stuff. Like I know, you know, 
typically what they like. So, so. what do you mean you approve and disapprove? So she, has she, <laughs> did she buy a present and you're like, I don't like that one? No, I back. don't like it. No. No, I mean, like, you know, she'll ask me, like, is this probably a good idea for so-and-so and this, you know, but that, I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not like the ultimate judge of, yeah. you know. No, you know, when they ask you sometimes certain questions, like, uh, you know, Jessica definitely is in control of how the house looks. She decorates it. She does a phenomenal job. Thank, thank around. God. She does a great job. And I honestly <laughs> yeah. am terrible at it and I really don't care a whole lot, but she'll ask me sometimes my opinion. And I know it really doesn't matter. Like, what do you like better, this one or this one? I'm like, I like that one. She's like, well, I like this one, so we're going to use this one. Yeah, but the point okay. is you have to decide. You know, yeah. like, we have to, like, say yes. I've learned to just do that, you yeah. know, instead yeah. of being like, whatever, it's stupid. No, the move is cares? The, the move is no, to flip it one. back. Well, which one did you like? Yeah. Oh, I like this one. Oh, I like that one, too, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I picked the opposite one of she likes every time. Exactly. Well, so we went actual Christmas shopping, like, at the mall. Crazy. Yeah, I know. You know what, dude? What is what is with you? you know, it's like not it's me. 1990. Like, yeah, what are we like? It's, 1985 here? What's it's going not on? me, dude. Talk to my girl. Huh? She loves she loves the whole thing. She loves Oh my God. Is there still like Santa Claus there and lines? Like, like yeah. lap sitting and she, all that? She loves the crowds. She loves the Christmas music. She loves the freaking the whole insanity of it all. And I used to hate it. I used to couldn't couldn't stand it. Yeah. But then I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, she likes it. Maybe I can change my perception of it a you're little getting, bit you know what with age you're getting so good at reframing bullshit oh you have to <laughs> you have to. I'm listening that's, to him, that's what life is i'm listening bro. to him closing himself right yeah. now it's like you know yeah. i looked at it totally <laughs> different and it's yeah. like these long hours why are you making long, my voice like that these long hour lines we get a chance to talk and why, talk why, with each other why'd you make my voice to see all these beautiful kids i don't talk like that Bro, bro, you are closing I love yourself sitting right on now. benches and watching you try and stuff. <laughs> no, listen, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah listen. it's the best. It's, hey, no, 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 no. Yeah, go ahead. For, yeah. Finish reframing it no, for no, us. As we're out no, there. No, man, it's more like this, Adam. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, you're right. Uh, there you go. That's yeah. my voice. Yeah. As we're out there, we're we're having a good time. We're you know we're getting coffee in between. I'm looking at the marvel of free markets and all this amazing things we can provide people. And uh, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. You know what I'm saying? I just picture Sal on a bench, like, look, yeah. look what capitalism is. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a beautiful display. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, dude. As some kid goes uh, running by yeah, yeah. and spills a Slurpee yeah. on his lap, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's so uh, fucking, I love it. I tell you uh, what, though, man. I used it's to, magical. I'll be honest to God, man. I used to fucking hate it so bad that I wouldn't even drive near the mall to see the... And yeah. now you know I go and it's okay. It's okay. I, I'm gonna st I'm gonna stick to my online shopping. In fact, it, what's crazy? It's cool to see. And I see like uh, we talked the other day about Mir and our other partner Viore. These companies now are they make gift guides. Mm. So I, I I thought Mir was the first one, and then I was looking at Viore's when I was shopping, and they do the same thing too, where they have a a link on their website they do specifically for the holidays, and it's a gift guide. And so if you're like shopping for you know an aunt or an uncle, that's and, smart, right? Yeah. No, and so and they categorize the apparel for what they would be like. Oh, are they more leisure, are they more yeah. active, are they more into this, and then you can like pick from those categories. So and the just, chances of like giving a good gift to go up. Well, yeah. Well, there's just way, right? I mean I think companies are getting so smart. Then they're making it so simple and easy. That's why it's so hard for me to justify going out in those crazy days because it's like you can now get everything shipped to your house and it's all and even like companies like this like i don't even have to browse the website mm. through all the apparel it's like oh i i want this for my aunt i go right here there's a there's yeah. something bundled yeah, together what for is me. this demographic typically like <laughs> yeah, you know i don't know this whole millennial thing it's weird <laughs> are, what aren't yeah. they planting aren't they doing something where they're are oh they so, doing they did, something so that's actually they did that today well this episode goes out tomorrow right but it was yesterday they did uh uh it's what's it called it's called giving giving tuesday i think they call it where uh, every Tuesday they, they you know donate or give away, and they they have a cause right now. I think the National Forest is doing it for their goal is to plant like 50 million trees. So every purchase on Tuesday, uh, that they planted a tree for every single purchase that was made. <laughs> okay, See? yeah, well cool, that's right? cool. I know that is cool. now the environment saved. You yeah, know? all this hysteria can stop. <laughs> and, we look, and we look and we look sharp. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the biggest <laughs> so much oxygen now. You, gotta, you know, you're like, like a grinch. Like carbon, <laughs> it's gone just, just like that. Just yeah. in the Thanks, Grinch, Fury. the Christmas <laughs> Grinch. Yeah. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> anyway, hey, uh, I forgot to tell you guys while we were shopping. This was this was part of that story. Um, I went to the Tesla. Uh, what is that? It, it, it's Santana Road. Oh, do you, you put your store, down payment on your, new, your truck or what? Yeah, no, no, I didn't do that. But uh, I went in there and I'm like, you know, I haven't really Dorito looked. Dorito chip truck. Because I, I do, I do appreciate them. There's just so many people own them. That's one of the reasons why I might not get one. But 
I like the the you know kind of what's behind it or whatever. So I went in there. I like the SUV a lot, and I looked up the math for um, and they actually do this for you to show you how much money you spend charging the car versus how much money you spend on gas. Mm-hmm. Do you know how much money it costs you to run per year for fifteen thousand miles a year? Uh, for the average uh, Tesla. I think it was the Model 3, I want to say. Oh, with the Tesla cost? Yeah. I don't know what Tesla is. I can figure out what the regular car costs. 600 bucks. Yeah, and regular car is about 6500 For the year? It's for the year. Wow. Yeah, for the whole year, dude. That's legit. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Because it still costs money to plug it in or whatever. Yeah. But 600, 600 bucks, it's not bad. Right, a tenth mm. of what it would cost. For yeah, cash. and so when you add into... No, you drive it for five or ten years, it's already it's already subtracted. Do they charge you when you go to those charging stations too? Like, uh, like some, a of them are fr- some of them are free. If you go to Whole Foods over here, yeah. they have free charging. Uh-huh. Ch- cost you nothing. Yeah, plug some it in. of them are free. Okay. Plug it in. Santana Row, the parking lot underneath there, plug it in for free. I thought they're all free. I think the only place you're paying is when it's connected to your, your house. To your house. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Are the supercharging stations free too? I don't know. I do, like, I'm totally like throwing bullshit yeah, out. Yeah, that seems that. like that but wouldn't I thought, last for very long. I thought that all the stations were technically free and it's just you're, you're obviously paying your electric bill if it's coming out of your house. Mm. Yeah. So that's probably where the cost is factored in is that, right? Mm. That's what I would guess. Yeah. Well, do the, well again, if you do the math that the, the truck you guys don't like, uh, <laughs> under 40 grand and now gas Gas is six hundred dollars a year. Sounds like I'm winning the argument You're every still single time. Trying. Yeah, I, feel like, <laughs> yeah. hey, I mean, not. I mean, you could really save money and ride a bike to work. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm, expe- I'm expecting a, a, like a message from Elon pretty soon. You know what I mean? Hey Sal, yeah, Good hey job, Sal, man. yeah. Thanks yeah. for promoting yeah. this. Yeah. Let's do a sponsorship. Here's your ugly track with, with yeah. Mind Pump. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would I mean, in there for you. If too. they sponsored us, I would take the fucking truck. You know, I would yeah. drive it around. Yeah. You do a whole episode, be like, "Hey Sal, you were right." Yeah. Yeah. Just make it all Mad Maxed out with a bunch of cages and barbed wire and shit on it. Yeah, it'll be inter- yeah. I, like it'll be cool to see if they do any. Uh, like, h- how do you have a truck and not like? Because Tesla, I've never seen uh, a Tesla modified. Have you ever seen a Tesla modified? Oh, that's a good no, question. just like I- I've just seen different paint jobs and rims on it, but that's not it, like though. yeah, and that was no all lift, no lowering, no yeah. like kits. Like I've never seen a Tesla modified. Do they even do modifications? And, and well, and I think be- you fuck it up. That be- way, that's right? what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it, because it's all ran on a computer system, does that fuck it all up? I guarantee it. I know that like even my like uh, my lift and tires. You have to go get your your oh, uh, speedometer recalibrated because it throws all that off. That's yeah, just, they do all that through the software updates. I feel like in the future you're gonna have all these uh, updates that are gonna like be by hackers. So you're gonna go like a website. And be like, <laughs> I want to make my car help. You know what I mean? Just download it, yeah. and it just changes your oh, car. Oh, so oh it I makes all these hydraulic things. Like, <laughs> as yeah. you're driving. Well, I would want to know who because I know that uh, like the TVs in like when you put a TV in your car and I imagine Tesla's the same way too like they won't let like movies be playing on the TV screen while you're driving but I bet you could hack that I'm sure you could hack it back when you when I had TVs in my car you could go that you would take it to somebody and they would hack into that so I could play movies Wait a minute they won't let you watch what about the TV in the back Those are different if oh. it's in the front like where the Tesla is at Didn't you have a video game console hooked up to yours I did <laughs> <laughs> what a safe driver! Yeah, you just had a stoplight. <laughs> yeah, play Mario Brothers to the front yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a bold sure. move. I mean, it was the front and the center, like Tesla now, was. Now let me ask you this: what? Did, did to be honest, did anybody ever use play yeah, video games while yeah, you were? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were, I was in my twenties, right? So of yeah. course we did. Like that's we were, a twenty-year-old idea. Yeah, yeah. No, when you're in your twenties <laughs> and you've you've got expendable income like that, you do weird shit like that. And then we, I mean, we used to go up to, uh, you know, to your point of thinking I don't use my fucking truck. You said the other day we used to drive to the. <laughs> No, really stung you. It did. Because like, yeah. you know why? Because I make fun of people that don't do that. Yeah, so for yeah, him to yeah, jab yeah. me like that, I was like, fuck off, guy. I use my truck. Right. So we would drive up to the snow almost every weekend in the winter. And, you know, it's a two and a half hour drive to the snow. And so my buddies that would be in the passenger seat in the back seat would be playing games while we drive up. So, yeah, we used it like that. Dang, so. that's, what's the worst thing you've ever spent money on as a kid to try and look cool? Oh, uh, like what's like, the, where have I wasted the most? <laughs> yeah, like that? where you're like, oh, this is going to be cool, but you never, you know. Clothes, for sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I was, uh, I mean, before Ed Hardy became not cool, like when it was <laughs> when it was underground. So I found You're an early adopter. Yeah, huh? I found Ed Hardy when it was way underground, and it was, you could only find it in like boutique shops. Drinking and Red was, Bull and vodka with your Ed Hardy shirt yeah, on. Yeah, you know, those, <laughs> and, you know, you know do you know the story of that, right? Like why that, like why people are teased and made fun of, like Ed Hardy affliction shirts now, which at one point both those shirts were fucking badass, sure. expensive. Did they have to do cool. Jersey Shore or what? No, they sold. They they sold. They sold the TJ. Ma- they they started to oh. carry. 
carry them in TJ Maxx. Oh, dude. And yeah, that'll kill. Before that, it cool. was they were boutique brands. Like mm. you, uh, you know, Ed Hardy is originated from an artist that a tattoo artist that used to draw actually draw right, those. Right, right, right. And then they would print it on shirts. It was underground. You would have to be able to find it in like small places. You were paying one hundred and fifty dollars a t shirt. Yeah. It was a big deal. Like in, if to, to get something like that. Well, fast forward five years plus later, I think it was when now it becomes popular. They're making millions mm. of dollars. Then they sell out and people's go to moms start wearing it. Well, then they go to TJ Maxx and you could buy them for twenty five dollars. So there was a point, Sal, to your to your question, where I had like a closet, just probably fifty plus T shirts that were one hundred and fifty dollars or more. Yeah. That like. Oh my God. Just that a couple of years later, now I would be teased if I wore them again. Oh, yeah. Right. So I bought a. I would uh, say that was probably one of the big. I, I, I don't think I'll ever spend that kind of money on a t shirt ever again. Yeah. You know, maybe like a, a nice suit or a nice pair of jeans that will last you mm. 10 years or something like that. But even then, I'm very careful now because I fell into that trap also of I had designer jeans at one point that were four or $500 a pair of jeans. Again, Wearing them five white, years. White li- stitching. Yeah. yeah, no, I had those. You know what I'm saying? And, and you wear you dazzled. Into, you can't wear those after five years. So no. they're they're cool for a little bit. So what's the point of getting real high quality jeans that last ten years if you can only wear them for five? Because know. five years later you're getting made fun of for wearing them. So yeah. that's the biggest waste of money. For yeah, me. I bought a um, some shoes like some flame docks. Yeah, because I thought I was like, <laughs> I thought I was like this cool rockabilly guy. You know, like, and they're like 250 bucks, like, you know, because it was all custom and leather and all this shit. And I'm just like, and then I wore them like twice and was like, what am I doing? Like, what, what? I'm not that guy, you know? Have you ever wasted money like that? You know, um, supplements would probably be the biggest thing. Oh, I, wow. I bought the fucking stacks and. All kinds of crazy shit because you know that. Yeah, but that's not trying to make yourself look cool or something. Have you ever uh, like you yeah, impress yeah. a girl or no, to okay, like, here's fit in yeah. when you're in high school? Yeah. So, um, well, I went through a phase where <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. I was probably 15 and I watched Saturday Night Fever for the first time, and John Travolta was like this fucking cool like Italian dude, you yeah, know. Yeah. So automatically, I'm like, fuck. That's me. So uh, yeah, my people. Yeah. So uh, for a second there, I tried to dress like that for a like little bit. Seventies. Yeah, you know, a little bit. <laughs> like platform bell shoes. Bottom, and bell nah, you know, like, you know, the leather jacket, like a medallion, and like a tra- gold medallion. I tried to do the walk thing. The only problem was I couldn't dance, so I could uh, not copy. All I got to do is <laughs> this. You yeah. know what I mean? It was terrible. <laughs> <It was laughs> like the, a character from Greece. No. Or yeah. when I got really into jujitsu. Like the first year, this is how you know when someone's new into mixed martial arts or jiu-jitsu. They you start wear wearing, your, yeah, wear your dude. robe around. Nobody's been doing it for a long time. Whereas, I, but I bought t-shirts, you know, jujitsu t-shirts and jujitsu hats, and everybody <laughs> fucking knows I train, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. A year later, I'm like, take this shit off. This well, that, that's what happened with Affliction, right? So Affliction again was a, a Nordstrom's brand, and it was still cool then. Then they partnered with uh, fighters in the UFC back when the UFC yep, could actually yep. go out and get there. And then er- all the teams started rocking affliction, so it was still cool for a minute. And then it became the the douchebag brand that everybody who wants to say I'm I'm a fighter, I'm an MMA uh, guy, rocking. Did the same thing to tap out. And yeah, like, yeah, that yeah, whole yeah. thing yeah. came and went. Yeah, it was it was funny to watch because like it, it was crazy though because it was they're trying to be like the standard. It's like this is the Nike of the sport, and then all of a sudden like you'd catch all these like random people that were just like thinking they're. MMA fighter that ruined it. The irony of all those things, it's like at one point people thought it was cool. Like at one point there was there was a time when all those things were cool to do. It's yeah. when it's not cool to do anymore is when it's already past its time and mm-hmm. you're just now getting on board. Yeah. Then yeah. you look like the guy yeah. who's it's like, like getting jiggy with it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like for a minute there are people like, yeah, 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 that's a cool saying. Yeah, that's well, it's like your it's like your 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 uncle or your aunt or your grandparents or your parents even for that that use slang that finally made its way to them. They finally it finally got to them. They finally understood it. They finally start using it. Kids have already moved yeah. on from it. I yeah. do that shit on purpose to my kids now just to embarrass yeah. the shit out of them. Yeah. On purpose. Yeah. If they come with their friends, yeah. I'll do like, you know what do they call it? Dabbing or whatever. Oh, I'll do dabbing. Oh, my kids are stop. Yeah. <laughs> stop it. Don't do that. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> like for sure. Oh yeah. The whole the visco thing where you're like yeah, just do that. that. Just I do that all the time. My kids hate that. Yeah, they get all annoyed, and it yeah. just it fuels me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, dude. You just wait I find out. Time. You got to find out the trends, and it, yeah, yeah, exploit it. Yep, totally <laughs> exploit them. <laughs> all right, our first question is from Joe Zapian. 
Does it take longer to build muscle or burn fat? I'm trying to get a feel how long to bulk and cut. Oh, this, this is a cool question. It's an interesting question because this there's, is a cool question. Yeah, because uh, I, you know, initially, I want to answer this from a physiological standpoint and say it's much harder to build muscle than it is to burn body fat. Physiologically mm. speaking, it's a slower process. Now, that, genetically speaking, yeah, or just just psychologically, or just culturally hmm. uh wow now we're talking because uh you know physiologically yes building muscle slow burning body fat can be fast if you do everything right but what about all the the, the roadblocks in front of you to trying to burn body fat i mean it, uh, what i used to tell clients was you know, and this took me kind of because you're right uh physiologically you would say right away the answer is building muscle because technically uh, I could go to the gym right now and run on the treadmill for five hours straight and I'm going to burn off some body fat. I cannot go to the gym and lift for five hours and build a pound of, a, a pound of muscle. So technically, if we were to compare it like that, building muscle is technically harder. But I tell I would tell clients, and again, this is coming you know full circle for me as a trainer, you know, after training so many people on both sides of this is that the grass is always greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. So if you're, and, and, and that's, you have to take into account too, genetics. And some people just struggle really hard with losing body fat, Be being in a caloric deficit, their body to actually burn like that. They've already slowed their metabolism way down. And so creating a large enough deficit for them to sh shed body fat is inc incredibly hard. But they could go to the gym, touch some weights, and the next day they feel like they put muscle on. So to me, it's it's really the, the grass is always green on the other side. The side that you've probably had the most challenging with, it's, it's hardest for you. Sure. Now, I mean, but, but again, I think for most people, um, burning body fat's hard because it requires uh, more... It requires more fundamental changes in your behavior, yeah. lifestyle, discipline, than building muscle does. So, like, you could take. I'd say I disagree with well, that. Well, no, it, it totally. Look, I'll tell you what. Uh, you take the average person and who's eating too many calories or whatever, have them lift weights three days a week. They're going to build muscle. To get them to burn body fat substantially, they have to change their diet. They have, which is very hard. Yeah, Changing diet's way harder. Yeah, but to take a kid like me, for example, who uh, I. I was not able to consume, or I, I shouldn't say I wasn't able, I wasn't consuming enough calories to support the amount of activity that I was doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not the average person, though, of yeah. course. Well, well uh, most, I mean, there's a lot of kids that, there's a lot of young kids with fast metabolism that play, demographic like yes, that, yeah. that play sports like athlete, athletic kids. There, I know that that's you why go, you always have to an answer this with depends, because yeah. like, yeah, whoever is yeah, in front of you the is, case you're making is right now, harder for him. For the, I'm right, talking right, about the majority. The, yeah. ca you're, the case you're making right now for the majority middle like age generalized client, answer. sure, but I, I think there's just as many people listening to this podcast that struggle with building muscle as as equally as somebody burning fat. Yeah, no, it's, it's the grass is green on the other side is the answer to me. It's not. I don't believe burning fat is more difficult. No, no, no. I 100% agree with you. But what I'm saying is that the majority because we have an obesity epidemic, we don't have a hard gainer epidemic, right? Um, most for most people. When conf when confronted with this question, for most people, for them, it's burning body fat is harder. Okay, which we, is why we, when I would get a client, we have, we have an obesity epidemic because eating overconsumption and being fat causes medical problems, and not building muscle doesn't cause medical problems. Therefore, it's it's talked about more. But there is as equal amount of people on the earth right now that would struggle to build muscle as there would be to build burn body fat. Well, so think That's about it this way. When you got the average client, the average client's goal was, I want to lose weight. What would be the first thing that you would focus on with them? Get them stronger and build more muscle. Correct. Okay. Part of the reason why we do that is it's a smart strategy. The part of it, it's easier. It's easier for them to get their mind around that. Like, mm -hmm. okay, fine. Come to the gym. I'm going to lift weights. I'm going to build muscle. I'm going to get stronger. We're going to focus on that first. So for most people, it's just a lot tougher. Now, physiologically speaking, it's harder to build muscle. Look, I could somebody could could uh, logically lose a hundred pounds in a year. Well, I just made, I gave but the, gain a hundred pounds. I gave of the muscle. analogy yeah. in one gym workout. You yeah, could go yeah. to the gym yeah. and literally burn off like a pound of muscle, maybe not or a pound of fat. I mean, mm -hmm. you could you could spend the whole day on the treadmill and you will burn body fat. Like if you spend all day on the treadmill sure. and you don't eat any calories, you for sure will burn body fat. You cannot go to the gym and spend all day at the gym and build a pound of muscle. Right. It doesn't mm. work that way. Right, so right, right. hands down, 
from a physiological aspect, 100% building muscle is more Definitely. difficult. But I would just, I would make the case that it's normally the grass is greener on the other side. It's always whatever is more difficult for you is more difficult for you. Totally. You know, I've had so many clients that uh, that are one or the other. I've had the the client who is extremely obese uh, and boy, I throw them in the gym, they touch some weights and we just, we pack on the muscle. Like you said, it's a, it's an easier strategy for those people before we try and to lose body fat. But then I've had the the kid or the, the young adult who's athletic and moves a lot and has a hard time consuming enough calories. You know, you ask them to come in the gym and add five pounds of muscle. It's like, oh, yeah, nice. I've been trying at them for the last decade. I tell them to get on a treadmill, reduce calories. They'll yeah. lose body fat real fast. Yeah, so. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's, in I think it's of, equally difficult. In terms of the adaptive processes of the body, fat is a faster – fat gain and fat loss is a faster adaptive process. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by physiological. Uh, the, 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 the way that your body burns body fat or stores body fat uh, is based off of thousands of years of evolution of dealing with uh, lots and lots of uh, times where we had lots of food or we had no food at all. And so the body does a very good job of bouncing back and forth. Now, when it comes to muscle, muscle building muscle is also an ad adaptation. It's a longer, slower adaptation. First off, your body doesn't store muscle when you ha are eating extra calories um, because muscle is expensive. It also requires something that burning fat does not. Right. It needs Your body needs a reason to have that muscle. Yes, and, and you need to feed it in order to do that. See, with, with burning body fat, you can go the other direction and you could be extreme and be okay. Like even though it's not ideal for you long term, I could technically shred. Like using the again the analogy, I could technically shred shred a pound of yeah. fat off someone's body by starving them and making them run like crazy. You can't do that same thing with. You have to feed the body adequate protein and calories in order for it to build muscle. It's also more specific when you're trying to build muscle. It's much more of a specific application of exercises and technique and sets and reps and. Burning body fat, you could do it in a more general way. And I don't, now this is not ideal, but like Adam's saying, you could just move more and eat less and you're going to burn uh, some body fat. If you just go to the gym and just randomly work out, you're probably not going to build- And not uh, change eating behavior. Yeah, you're probably not going to build any muscle. But that being said, psychologically speaking, uh, most people have such a tough time with burning body fat. It's so hard for them to change their eating behaviors. It's so hard for them to well, change I, it, at least in a long term, uh, you know, a long term way. Yeah, I think they would be like equal, and I'm trying to like decipher which one's harder. But if you tried to like extract, if if I'm just building lean muscle and I'm not just you know consuming whatever the fuck I want to consume, and I'm 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 very disciplined in my you know regimen, and I'm trying to like build this lean muscle versus you know maintain like the current amount of lean muscle mass I have while cutting down. I mean, those two processes are are. are are pretty damn equal in my opinion. Well, to support more of your argument, Sal, because I know the direction you're going, and what I do agree with is that most clients, the majority of probably listening, the majority of people that we would take on have fucked up their metabolism. They have, you know, yo-yo dieted so many times, and when they come to you 50, 100 pounds, whatever, overweight, a lot of times where their caloric maintenance is at is already in a, in a very challenging place to take them to immediately start mm -hmm. to lose body fat. I mean, more often than not, I get the client who's got 30 or more pounds of body fat they want to lose. <clears throat> they sit in front of me. You would think that, oh, this person's really fat. They must be eating 5,000 calories and McDonald's every day. And it's no, not at all. In fact, a lot of times that person is eating nowhere near that. And that's because they have slowed their metabolism down from, from, poor choices of exercise and poor choices of food for such a long period of time that when we get them as a, as a trainer, man, yeah, burning fat right away is really challenging because the state that they're currently in, you know? Yeah. And so that's why taking them into a muscle building focus first is going to, is advantageous for us. Now, the, the irony of this is that um, building muscle helps burning to burn body fat. Burning body fat doesn't necessarily need mm -hmm. to help building muscle. In, in other words, yeah. regardless of what your goal is, if your goal is to lose lots of body fat or your goal is obviously to build muscle, build muscle first, build muscle, yep. building mu more muscle will make any goal you have much easier, especially the fat loss one. This is a big one that we communicate all the time. When people's 
ultimate goal is to lose weight, I think they focus so heavy on burning tissue mm -hmm. that they just care about pounds coming off the scale, not realizing that they may be setting themselves up for uh, long-term failure. Short-term success, but long-term failure. Um, building muscle helps with long-term success regardless of what your goal is. So I always focus on that regardless of what the client's uh, goal is. Next question is from DH McKay 09. What's the deal with milks? Are well, almond, what's the deal? <laughs> are almond and soy milk more or less processed than regular dairy? You, you know what? So you want to talk about marketing? <laughs> Brilliant marketing. Okay. I don't even understand this question. For, <laughs> what's the deal with, what are the deal with them? And, and Like all milks? Yeah. Almond yeah. milk, soy milk, yeah. uh, uh, coconut milk. Yeah, like all are they more or less processed? So, so first off, this makes me laugh because you want to talk about the brilliance of marketing. <laughs> There's only one milk. Okay. Those are the yeah. kind the kind that comes from animals, cow yeah. milk, goat milk, and camel milk, whatever comes from There's animals. There's no nut teats. Okay. So uh, soy and almond uh, milk. I was telling you, just like almond juice. They're juices. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's exactly what yeah, they are. Yeah, it's yeah. just a juice. They're not milks. Now they call them milks because it makes them more palatable, right? Imagine if you went to the store and you bought almond soy juice. milk or almond juice. You'd be like, Ugh. I mean, soy juice or almond juice. Doesn't sound as palatable. Plus, they're white. They kind of, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to penetrate into a staple market by labeling something milk, with this, which is brilliant. Now, I actually never even thought about this. It's oh. funny. This is a funny question that Nut we're even frost. going here. Oh, yeah. But it's so true. <laughs> but yeah. it's totally right now. Uh, processed. Well, okay. <laughs> processed refers to all the steps it takes between taking something yeah. from its what, its initial form to your plate or whatever. Okay. <sighs> Uh, milk a cow. Technically, if it's a healthy cow and everything, you could just drink the milk uh, right there. Yeah. Almonds and soy. There's a there's a there's more of a process that goes in. Now they're minimally processed. They can be minimally processed, but they're still processed. And oftentimes, there's more things added to them to make to make them more uh, nutritious. Um, if you can tolerate dairy, uh, dairy dairy's fine. In fact, it's actually can be quite healthy, especially if it's from good sources. Um, but I mean. I feel like you should address this whole processed conversation too. It reminds me of the post on our forum just recently too. Um, just we, it's almost impossible today uh, to eat a diet and not get some somewhat of processed food in there. Well, and I know yeah. we've talked about it as you know um, one, one of the major contributors to the obesity epidemic. Right, and and I think because of that, I think uh, I I would never want our audience to think that like I go through my day and I don't have anything that's processed like it's just it's part of it's part of it now do i target yeah. whole natural foods for a majority of what i consume absolutely am i always but i'm also not going to fret over my almond milk being yeah. processed or I'm not. not a hippie nazi yeah right. well technically processed everything Which that's in a weird your combo yeah technically everything in your grocery store is processed technically even a piece of steak um, unless you, I don't know if you've ever seen a piece of steak running around outside. <laughs> I want uh, steak milk. Yeah, look at the, the fact that it's been cut um, and placed in a package and covered, you know, with plastic so you can look at it and it looks nice. Yeah, and, the goal is less processed, right. right? Now, here's the deal with processed food: be aware of its impact on your body. And the main potential detriment of processed, by the way, there's a lot of benefits to processed food. Also, I want to be very clear: um, we can feed more people; doesn't go bad as easily. It's an easy way to deliver nutrition to people, uh, especially around the world, um, you know, whole natural foods tend to go bad. So if we're trying to ship food to other countries or whatever, difficult to do because by the time it gets there, it's, it's not good anymore. We actually waste more food, uh, when, when it's unprocessed as well. So there's some benefits, but here's some of the potential detriments. They make you eat more. They're designed to make you eat more. Now, does that mean you should be like afraid of them? No, be aware. Just be aware. Look, yeah. I'm aware. I, I drink alcohol sometimes. There's alcoholics out there. I know that. I know there's potential detriments to it, but I drink it sometimes. You know, um, I do lots of. Sometimes I eat candy as well. I think we live in the real world, and real balance means being aware of these things and be able to navigate your life in a relatively healthy, stress-free free way. There's a lot of fitness, you know, lunatics, fitness enthusiasts that are that are fanatics mm -hmm. who they they're, they're so afraid of everything they they avoid everything in the in the pursuit of becoming healthier. And in reality, their, the health is being uh, harmed because of their stress, um, their rigidity, and the fact that they, 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 they sacrifice the relationships with people around them. They don't go places because they're afraid of the food and the whatever that's there. 
we live in the real world. Uh, you know, process it, it's okay, but just you know, know what it, what you're dealing with and make smart decisions. But as far as milks are concerned, if you can tolerate dairy, there is no milk that's better than than dairy. None nutrient of the, wise, nutrient yeah. wise, it's 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 incredible. It's a, been a staple in for for humans in some regions for thousands of years. Um, the the full fat, by the way, full fat, organic. If you can find uh, raw, non homogenized from good, well sourced cows, boy, that stuff's got some incredible. It helped uh, Genghis Khan health uh, benefits. take over China. That's right? a good. That's a good point. They yeah. did. They yeah. were able to travel with that and milk their their animals and made them strong as shit. Now, that's what, always my argument for cheese. Uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Genghis Khan did it. Next question is from Thatchman nineteen. What tips or advice would you give to someone who suffers from body dysmorphia and is triggered in a gym? Train at home. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to go to the gym yeah. at all. Um, have you guys ever met anybody like this? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And uh, like I've had clients that have come in that have been very super like yeah. self-conscious and have really had to take my time with, you know, like like staying in this. I, and this is where I really just kind of find a spot where they are comfortable. And then we kind of just work from there and just slowly sort of introduce things. And it's, it's definitely a slow, gradual, you know, process of an introduction to dif different things. So they feel confident. I think I think like I think everybody kind of falls on on a spectrum here. Mm -hmm. Like I, yeah. I feel like all the clients that I train are uh, somewhere here. Like to Justin's point, like I think that was really common uh, that I would go get like a little, I you know block off a little five yeah. by five square in the corner of the gym somewhere. Especially the freeways. Right? Yeah, and bring dumbbells over and all, you know straight bar stuff, whatever I needed, and we would do like the whole session there to where you know you know he or she felt very private uh, with me, even though we're in this public gym. So I think, uh, and then that that's the extreme, right? Where someone, they come in and they're just like, they're so worried about everybody looking at them. So you do things like that. But I mean, I think everybody has a little bit of being self-conscious, especially when you first come in the gym. And that part of a trainer is coaching them through that process that honestly, most people here, they're here for themselves and what they're working on their own goals. They probably don't give a shit about you and where you're at. They all had to start somewhere. Most people in the gym too, it's amazing, are growth-minded people. They're trying to improve themselves. So they're not judging you. They're probably more supportive. This is yeah. the same like common conversation that we would have. Uh, the the gyms that uh, my my female clients were most intimidated in, they would probably be the most accepted in. Like going into like a you know a very bodybuilder esque or powerlifter gym seems so scary because the bodies look so amazing. Oh my god, everybody there will help you. Yeah, but the yeah. the irony of those those are some of the most amazing people to talk to inside the gym because they've dedicated their whole life to working in there. They see someone like you who's starting. And they're, it motivates them and inspires them, and that most all of them are actually really cool to talk to. Well, I feel like we also had this in mind when we were going through like what to put up for our YouTube content. Like, I think that you know people can and have access to information now that like you know as we were coming up through like getting into the gym was it was definitely intimidating if you didn't already know what you're doing. But if you have the ability to kind of go through the videos, watch you know like uh, certain exercises that might you know be more intimidating for you so you have some kind of grasp of it and you can practice it at your house or you know like you just you can gain more knowledge that way coming into the gym i think you know it, it's very empowering that way and i think it, a lot of that will dissolve over you know the amount of information that you consume yeah and this is a, this question is a great opportunity to talk about how you would communicate uh to somebody who's trying to Maybe embark on a fitness journey, but has some 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 roadblocks. You know, I I just read a post earlier um, by a, a trainer who talked about how you know one of the main reasons why people say they can't work out is they don't have enough time. Um, now this person's argument was well, that's a soft way of putting it. It was a lot more bold. Than oh that. yeah, and the way they they put it was bullshit. Everybody has the same hours during the week. Um, you know. Three hours for the week is only 1.7% of your total time. Anybody can have time. You just have to make time, which is technically correct, but is a terrible way to positively influence someone. So someone like this who says, you know, oh God, I want to work out, but I'm really afraid of the gym. Some trainers might be like, oh, who cares? Come to the gym. Nobody gives a shit. Let's come work out. You got to be fearless. Come to, you know, they got the best. You're not going to help that person. The reality is anywhere you can be active is better than doing nothing at all. Right. You can work out at home, and working out at home is far better than not doing anything yep. at all. Well, this is where I completely started to change the way I communicated uh, walking to clients. I mean, I told you uh, in the show before that 
uh, if someone told me that if I asked them, what do you do for exercise? And they said they walk every day for a mile or whatever, I would scoff at that like it's not exercise, which is the complete opposite now because someone like this, this is a, a classic example of what a great place for this person to start. Say, hey, you know, if you don't like coming to the gym right now, don't go to the gym. Yeah. Who says you need to do that? Like, yeah. let's create some new good behaviors and habits that you weren't currently doing. Have you ever gone for a 30-minute walk every day? Totally. And they go, no, I've never done that. Do you think you could commit to 30 minutes of walking every single day? Yes, I do. Well, guess what? That's seven days a week times 30 minutes. That's actually a good amount of exercise for somebody who yeah. was not doing it whatsoever. You need something to build on. Right. Yeah. And it, a lot of times, like it, it, that's where it gets it hard because they want to build everything at once and they want to get like, you know, go to, to, you know, intermediate status like right away. It's like, no, like take your time. Find out what you can do first. Like yeah. what, what are those few things you can do right now? What does that look like? Now, younger younger me with a person like this would really try hard to convince them to go to the gym. I try motivating them. I try using logic and know the gym is the best place. You got to be fearless. This is for your health. And I, I would try and do that. And what would end up happening um, is I would talk someone out of it. I would make such a compelling case that the gym is the best place to work out. Or they do it begrudgingly and then they and then, fucking then they go and they never come back again. Right, right, right. Or or I make such a good case for the gym that the person thinks, well, that's the only place I'll get fit, but I'm not gonna go there, so I'm not doing anything at all. And I would have lost the person entirely. Just like I said earlier with the with the whole time argument. Instead, what's the goal? The goal is to get the person to start somewhere. Now here's the irony of this, okay? The irony is you take someone like this who's afraid of going to the gym because they're being triggered and you tell them you don't got to go to the gym, just do some stuff at home. And let's say they start with two exercises at home and they just practice those and eventually they do three exercises and then four exercises. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're going to have more confidence to go into a gym? Of uh, course. Yeah. Now they've been doing something. Yeah. Now they're kind of into it and they think, okay, maybe now got some momentum. I have the courage to step into the gym. So this is a lesson for all you trainers out there. You know, uh, put your, your, your be empathetic and remember what your goal is. Your goal is not to be right. You're not trying to win an argument with the person or to tell them what the best thing is necessarily. Your goal is to influence them positively, and any step forward is a step forward. Next question is from M. Bohan. If you found yourself single again, would you use a dating app to meet someone? <laughs> oh why God. or why not? Gosh. Wait, how, wait, okay. wait, wait, did anybody how, actually use one? No, I've no, never, never used one. How, how old are we I when did. this happens? Are we t t today? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Because today, no, definitely not. You wait, hold on a second. How would you? How would you date? Think about our schedule. Uh, our lot, you know, the, the work, our lives, the fact that you're almost forty. I'm, you know, bro, the bar. The fact that you're almost forty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, guy. You gray hair. Oh, you know, Balls walk to the bar. Hey, how uh, you doing? I'm a social butterfly guy. <laughs> come on, I'm just saying. Like, I, I wouldn't. I today, I would definitely not. You know, the the 22 year old douchebag me would though for sure because I would look at it like a I'm gonna you know take Su like, Susie out. Yeah, my how my boy does it. Like my buddy does yeah. it like that. I think I shared it on the podcast before. That he run he has like line three, up your whole week yeah right? three or four of those apps and he's got like the whole week lined up of dates and I would totally be that guy where now if I was single at almost forty no I wouldn't I wouldn't do that I here's the thing what I've what I've learned in uh, all my years of being single and dating is that it's amazing I love wise Adam yeah. well it's a, it's yeah. a it's amazing when you stop when yeah. you stop searching for a partner well, I'm actually in the middle of actually like talking and coaching a, a client friend of mine who's in their their uh, mid-50s and single for the first time. And this is a conversation that we've been having. And one of the things that I keep telling her is that, you know, when, you, when you're when you so hung up on like trying to find another partner or date or figure all that out, it's amazing how, much, how difficult it is. And the moment that you just let all that go and put all that energy and effort that you were probably going to apply to apps and pour it into yourself and improving who you are, it's pretty wild how you you will attract the right person or come across the right person when yeah. the right time is supposed to happen. Yeah. And I, I've seen I've seen this happen many times in my own personal life, and I've seen it happen tons of times in all the clients that I've trained that were single and going through the same thing. And it always it always plays out this way. Like so, I would treat it the same way. I would be like, wow, I'm single now. I don't. I, if I'm not in a relationship, I don't have a kid. I don't have all these other things that are take up a lot of my time. That all of a sudden just frees up yeah. hours on hours on developing myself more. And shit will happen. And as you're developing yourself, wouldn't you think too, like you get stuck in a pattern where you see the same people all the time, you cross the same paths. Like you need to, if, as working on yourself, you got to do something different. You 
got to get out there. You got to, you know, find some other interest or something that, you know, you can, you know, sort of fill your cup with, which then presents an yeah. opportunity with a whole new sort of pool of people. You're so a date I, app guy for sure. I'm going to, this is why I'm going to disagree. I think that uh, <clears throat> dating online and using apps is more valuable to people as they age than it was to than it is to younger people. Now I know young people use no, it. No, I agree with that. But I but statistically speaking, the fastest growing demographic of people who use these apps are older people because they have jobs, oftentimes they're divorced or they have kids, they have lots of responsibilities. They don't want to go hang out at bars and concerts and places where they're going to yeah. necessarily mingle with people. They don't necessarily you know, yeah, feel like they that, fit in that there. That can be rough. Going on an app, and of course, there's different apps. You know, there's the ones that you you're trying to hook up, but then there's the ones that are more uh, you know geared towards relationships. From I would totally use it because I'm busy. I'm not trying to go out and, and drink and hook up with people. I want to like make meet people. Hey, and, and it might be a great way to do that. Statistically speaking, you're 100 percent right. I just don't. The question is us. I don't think I'm that guy. Mm -mm. Yeah. I think, again, I'm the guy that would pour himself into all the things that would better me. I think by that, whether that be going to some seminar where I'm learning something in Barnes & Noble, reading a book, you know, at these places that I'm not currently at right now because I'm in a relationship, have a kid, and I'm busy as fuck, I would be doing those things and I wouldn't be surprised if I ran into someone and struck up a conversation. Unless you're just looking for a good smash. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a tender guy. Then wow. that's, that's the only app. That's yeah. a nice thing to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're, I mean, you're, Sal, you're right. Somebody's I mean, got to keep it real. You know, they say now, I think it's three out of four. What's the stats on this, Doug? Maybe you can look it up. Three out of four relationships today yeah. start online. So, it's like the statistics are ridiculous. So you ridiculous. guys know I used to train a lot of people that were over the age of 60 and 65, right? And uh, quite a few of them were either widowed, especially after 70. So a lot of them were women older than 70 and they were widowed um, or divorced. And they were using these online dating apps and yeah, stuff. Yeah, all my clients did. And it was, at their age, phenomenal because yeah. I couldn't imagine trying to meet someone when you're 70. My mom met her yeah. husband on it right now. The odds my, more my, what, favorite, my, my last client did one of those crazy services where she paid crazy money for one of those uh, ones where they actually take you through like, they have some of these where they take you like through counseling first and then they drop you into it and it's like 50 wow. grand. Like, yeah. Whoa. She that found her work? She, oh yeah, she found her husband. She got married to yeah, him? Yeah. Uh -huh. She just got married this last year to him. Wow. And it was amazing and she's trying to turn one of my other clients You know what's funny it, about like, that? What huh. makes me what makes me wonder about stuff like that is okay, definitely they match you based off your likes and stuff like that. But I I wonder if it's simply because they've pulled together the people serious enough about finding a partner to spend yes. 50 grand. Yeah. You know what I mean? So okay. then you meet somebody, like, oh, so, we're very serious about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you and then you and if you're a counselor, you can, you know, you can see who's got what type of issues. You don't want to pair yeah. you don't want to pair two insecure people together. That's going to be a fucking nightmare like you. So let's say if you were single now, what, what would be your ideal situation to meet someone? Forget the app for a second like It you, would be you, it would really be so my ideal way of meeting someone would be exactly what I said. It would be I would be in pursuit of doing something that is improving or growing myself. And then you and, ran into And I someone. ran into somebody else yeah. who was probably doing the same thing. We're, we both happen to be at a Jordan Peterson talk or something. Right. You yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And or like a Slayer concert. Or that. Yeah. Yes. So it could be <laughs> wow, that. Wow, she's yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> she's a little dark, yeah. but uh, she's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but hey, I, hey. I mean, I, I think that uh, that's how I would I would want to to find somebody. Like, and, and I would say that not... Well, shitting on the apps, not and knowing fully aware of the statistics behind that, and I know a lot of people go that direction. It's just not my well, style. Well, one of the ways Jessica, when I first saw Jessica, it was she was literally head buried in a thick book. I don't remember exactly what she was reading, but it was like it was hard. It was deep material. She had glasses on, and she's like totally into this book. And I, I'm looking at her. I'm like, hey, you know, hey, my name's Sal. <laughs> she, she looked up. She said hi. Went right back to her book, and I was like, damn. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you, you can't tell me that you and I know you're 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 you know going the dating app route, but you can't tell me that you may now you would find yourself with if you had no kids, no relationship, you had more free time, you wouldn't find yourself at like again a Jordan Peterson talk or at a Barnes and Noble reading a book and oh you're walking down the mind pump of it. You're yeah. you're walking down the political <laughs> session and there's a cute girl reading on the floor some some free market book and you're not going to say hi to her. You ain't you know going to find very many girls. <laughs> <laughs> you would never find that. Milton Freeman's my hero. Never, dude. Yeah, you might, bro. You might. Yeah, you know they, what I'm saying? And they're pursued by like 15 other dudes like me. These are the only ones. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. 
You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.